Good morning. For the sermon today, I have a story that some of you may know, and it goes like this. During the North African campaign, a bunch of soldier boys had been on a long hike and arrived in a little town called Casino. The next morning being Sunday, most of the boys went to church. The sergeant commanded the boys at church, and after the chaplain had read the prayer, the text was taken up next. Those of the boys who had a prayer book took them out. But this one boy only had a deck of cards, and so he spread them out. The sergeant saw the cards and said, Soldier, put away those cards. After the services were over, the soldier was taken prisoner and brought before the provost marshal. The marshal said, Sergeant, why have you brought this man here? For playing cards in church, sir. And what do you to say for yourself, son? Much, sir, replied the soldier. The marshal said, I hope so, for if not, I shall punish you more than any man has ever been punished. The soldier said, Sir, I have been on a long hike for about six days and had neither Bible nor prayer book, but I hope to satisfy you with the purity of my intentions. With that, he started his story. You see, sir, when I see the ace, I am reminded there is but one God. And the deuce reminds me that the Bible is divided into two parts, the Old and the New Testament. When I see the three, I think of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. When I see the four, I think of the four evangelists who preach the gospel. There is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. When I see the five, I think of the five wise virgins who trimmed their lamps. There are ten of them. Five were wise and were saved. Five were foolish and were shut out. When I see the six, I am reminded that in six days God created this great heaven and earth. With each passing day, he created the heavens, the earth, light, the oceans and land, the plants, the sun, the moon, and all living things, including man and woman. When I see the seven, I'm reminded that the seventh day he rested from his great work. When I see the eight, I think of the eight righteous people God saved from when he destroyed this earth. There was Noah and his wife, there are three sons and their wives. And when I see the nine, I think of the lepers our Savior cleansed. Nine of the ten didn't even thank him. And when I see the ten, I think of the ten commandments God handed down to Moses on a table of stone. I try and live these commandments each and every day of my life. When I see the king, I remember there is but one king of heaven, God Almighty. And the queen is the blessed Virgin Mary, who is queen of heaven. And the jack or knave is the devil. When I count the number of spots in a deck of cards, I count 365, the number of days in a year. There's 52 cards, the number of weeks in a year. There's four suits, the number of weeks in a month. There's 12 picture cards, the number of months in a year. And there are 13 tricks, the number of weeks in a quarter. So you see, sir, when I look at my deck of cards, it serves me as a Bible, almanac, and prayer book. So when I want to talk to God and thank him, I just pull out the old deck of cards, and they remind me all I have to be thankful for. The sergeant stood there for a minute, and with tears in his eyes and pain in his heart, he said, Soldier, can I borrow that deck of cards? Do you suppose life is like a deck of cards that you never know what you're going to get? Sometimes I like to hide my cards. We all do. We just put on our poker faces and x-ray our opponent's deck while ignoring the hand we've been dealt. I think that's called cheating in the game of cards, but not in the game of life. Or is it? The Bible says to examine our own deck first. I know this is one of my mom's favorites. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye while ignoring the plank that's in your own? Do you have an ace of spades? Are you proud of your position? Are you stuck with meaningless cards that won't earn you any points and help you take the lead? Like I said before, we never know what we're going to get. Sometimes the cards may seem unnecessary, but all the while they're filling our hand and keeping us in the game. Don't quit. You haven't lost yet. In fact, you won't lose the game of life if you keep your eyes on your own deck first. Be thankful for the hand you've been dealt and work with them. Don't let them work you. It's not about what you've been dealt, but what you choose to put down. The deck of cards represents blessings and trials, worldly goods and eternal treasures. Some of you have been dealt sickness and job loss, heartache and betrayal, but not all cards are losing cards. Look at the rest of your deck. You have cards in there that can help you win. They are lowly cards, and at first glance you may think they cannot carry a lot of weight, 
but they do. I look at my life and I know I have eternal treasures, or as Galatians explains it, fruits of the Spirit, which are love, faith, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and gentleness, and self-control. I often take these for granted, yes, but yet these outweigh worldly goods. I don't have a lot of tangible stuff like wealth or fame, but according to the Bible, I couldn't hold on to these forever. I can't take them to heaven with me. The blessings outnumber the trials as well. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are those in the pure of heart, for they they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. These blessings are the cards which earn you the most points. These lowly cards give me comfort, the earth, fullness, mercy, vision of God, an inheritance as a child of God, and the kingdom of heaven. Now those are the cards worth keeping. You might want to keep your eyes on them. So look a little harder and take notice of the hand you've been dealt. If you're a Christian, you are the undefeated reigning champion card shark for life and beyond. Today I have given each of your families your own miniature deck of cards that you can keep and remind you of your blessings and give you strength in your daily Christian living. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the deck of cards you've dealt each one of us, and we ask that these cards not only guide us, but also inspire us to be grateful for who we are, what we have, and where we are going in our daily Christian living. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. We will now stand and join in the singing of Trust in the Lord, hymn number 527, a great reminder that God is our deck of cards. <laughs>